everyone, and welcome to How It Works. My name is Michelle White, and I'm going to be your host today as we talk about the basic parts of digital signage. Now I'm going to break this up into sort of two parts. First part, we're going to talk about terminology. Terminology is so key. With there being so many digital signage companies out there, everyone has their own language. And it's important that you understand the reach terminology, which will lead us into the process. How easy and quick is it to get digital signage up and running? Second part of the video is I'm actually going to jump into our REACH CMS. I'm going to show you guys some of our main capabilities and our main features. All right, my fellow viewers, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so our first part of this video is talking about terminology. When you talk about terminology, it kind of leads into sort of how the process works, right? How, how does digital science work at Reach? So our first part is we have this terminology called a layout. Now a layout is basically your entire display or your entire screen. So to break this down just a little bit more, let's say you have a horizontal screen. Now usually horizontal screens are what we call 16.9, which means that they're 1920 by 1080. And now if you take that screen and you flip it and you make it a vertical, again, most of the time that size is 1080 by 1920. Of course, if you're dealing with video walls or maybe iPads, tablets, right, there might be different sizes there, but your layout is the entire screen or the entire display. Within that layout, we have what we call zones. Now you can have one zone or you can break it up into multiple zones. And we'll talk about why you would break it up in just a second. In zones, we have what we call apps. Now you can put one app in one zone, sort of that, I call it like a one-to-one -one ratio, or you can have multiple apps in a zone. Now some people, they like to break up their zones because they wanna communicate more than just having one, right? They wanna break up their content. And so maybe they'll have a calendar over here and social media over there and you know their main content in one zone. So again, you have that flexibility and that capability. Now, when I talk about apps, we have over a hundred different apps at Reach. Now, everything is 100% free. We don't add on, we don't charge you for anything. You have access to control and manage those. Now, apps, I'll kind of name some of them, can be content that you upload into the system. So that's stuff that you've created, you schedule it out to sort of advertise. Uh, the latest and greatest social media posts. You can provide news content, maybe CNN or ESPN. Uh, you can have stock information. You know, weather radar, traffic, tickers that scroll, time, right? All those different apps. And I encourage you to check out our website to learn more about them. We have examples, we have videos. We do a good job of documenting and giving you ideas of how you can really stylize these to make them look good and, and fit your branding. So that's kind of the basic structure of terminology and how that process works at Reach. So let's go jump into the system now. All right, you guys, so I logged into the Reach system here. Um, the CMS is basically a cloud-based solution, which means that you can access this anywhere in the world and obviously at any time. Uh, when it comes to permissions or users, and we'll sort of deep dive a little bit more into the, the permissions, but um, we can do SSO capabilities and we have no limitation when it comes to users. So we're not gonna nickel and dime you, we're not gonna restrict you. Um, the only thing that we do encourage is that every user has their own username and password and obviously we encourage that for, you know, mainly security reasons. All right, so our first application we're going to kind of tackle or our first sort of functionality capability is the um, player management. So player management is huge and it becomes bigger, especially when you're at an organization level. Um, organizational level obviously means that you're dealing with like a network, right? You're dealing with multiple locations or, or multiple facilities. Uh, usually it means that these screens are not just down the hall from you, right? They're in a different state or they might even be in a different country. And so player management can be very key, can be very uh, helpful for someone in your, your shoes. And so uh, again, functionality here, um, obviously you can control obviously the naming of the player and stuff like that, but you can restart, you can refresh, you can actually get live screenshots, which again, very, very helpful when you're dealing with another state or, or another country. Um, one thing too that's big with the player management is it controls what's running on the screen. And so the best scenario I always give is, let's just say your CEO is about to do some live streaming and he or she um, is obviously going to you know, schedule this out and is going to push this live streaming to 
maybe all the players, right? Or, or maybe only half. Um, the player management can give you that access and that control. And so again, we're here to help you. We're here to, to help you manage that, but know that you have access to do it as, as well. All right, so our other application here, that's a big one, is the media library. Um, you're gonna be in the media library basically a lot. Uh, it, it is the biggest application we have. It is basically holds content. Um, <clears throat> content, right? That can be JPEGs, PNG files, PowerPoints, PDFs. Maybe there's videos you create, YouTube. It is like the foundation, the holder of anything you upload into the system. So if you feel comfortable, obviously using PowerPoint, then stick to it. You know, we're not, we don't want to change your ways in any way. Uh, if you have designers that are using Adobe products, that's totally fine. Just upload those assets into the media library. We also have a back end, which allows you and your team to create your own assets. So we understand not, not everyone's designers and it's, it's okay, but we want to give you the tools to be successful. And we want to give you the tools to have good looking content. On top of that, we have preset templates. So our design team took a step back. We made a list of these categories and then we made a list of these templates. And as you can see, happy birthdays or you know social media ones or shout outs, anniversaries. And the point of preset templates obviously is for you to easily click on one, change out the name, maybe you wanna just change out a color of a couple of things and then easily just push it to one or multiple screens. Within the media library, as, you, as I said, that it's, it's holding all the assets, right? So being organized and being able to find these assets is very, very important. Um, so we have ways to do that, all right? We have tags, if you're familiar with that. We have folders. We have ways to filter. So you can filter by the format. When I say format again, you can filter by announcements, you can filter by JPEGs, you can filter by uh, videos. On top of that as well with the media library, we can integrate from OneDrive. So maybe that's a better workflow for you. Uh, if you're familiar with Canva, right? Some people like to use Canva, they like to create their assets there. Uh, we can pull from Canva and you can actually create uh, assets in Canva in our system. So again, a lot of ways to basically get assets or, or create assets. Um, so the next one down, you guys, is, is the playlist management. Playlist management and the media library, they, they sort of work together. Um, usually your first step is the media library, right? So your first step is you're gonna add assets or you're, you're gonna create assets. Second part is you're gonna come into the playlist and again, you have complete access and control of this. You can create as many playlists as you want. There's no restrictions on this. Uh, you can hide certain playlists from certain users. Um, but the big thing that I'm trying to point out here in the playlist management is the publishing setting. So the question you ask yourself is, all right, I've uploaded these assets or I've created these assets. Now, when do you want it to run, right? Do you want it to run next week? Do you want it to start three months from now? Um, the publishing setting is, is very, very key because it makes your workflow easy to use. We understand that you probably have a million things to do, right? And you're probably wearing a lot of different hats. Um, you probably can't focus on digital signage just, you know, solely. So with that being said, well, let's make your life easy and let's make it where you don't need to be in the system every single day. And we give you these publishing settings, uh, again, to make it easy for you to, again, push content out to digital signage. Or to your organization. Um, all right, our next one down, I'll click on calendars, but we're just going to kind of talk about integrations. So Reach itself does a phenomenal job when we're dealing with integrations. And, and integrations can mean a lot of different things. So one thing, when I think of integrations, I think of emergency alerts. All right, we have a wonderful list of vendors that we work with that we can integrate from. Um, emergency alerts, obviously, if you look at that list and you're like, oh no, <laughs> you know, I use somebody different. Don't freak out, all right? We love that, actually. We, we love the challenge. So with that being said, what we do is we get on the call, right? We get on the phone with that vendor, with you, and we figure out just how can we get the data? That's originally the big thing when you're talking about integrations is just how can we get the data? And uh, we have no problem jumping on the phone with any of these vendors, whether I'm talking about alerts or, or you know, any tabular data or you know, SQL database, stuff like that. Um, it's just how are we gonna get the data? Uh, another thing with integrations, calendar information. So calendar information, I'm kind of referring to like Outlook information or like Google Calendar. I say those two just because everyone's like, oh yeah, I know what she's talking about. Um, but again, what if you have information that's on a website or uh, again, upcoming events, facility information that you want to pull on your digital signage? Just because you don't see the list doesn't mean we can't do it. Uh, another integrations that we do, and I kind of just already said it before, but I call it tabular information, but some people might refer to it as, you know, KPI data. 
um, manufacturing data. Uh, I'm trying to think like, like I said, SQL database, uh, Excel files, maybe Excel files from SharePoint. Um, again, you want to pull that information and then maybe on the dashboard, you want to have graphs and uh, maybe you want to have a dashboard feel. Again, 100% all doable and Reach does a phenomenal job when it comes to that integrations. All right, so you guys, our last one here that we're just going to tackle is the, the user permissions. And again, I talked about it a little bit, but you can use as many users as you want. We obviously encourage that every user who logs into the system, of course, has their own username and password. Uh, we have SSO capability as well. And then we have three levels of different permissions. Now, you're not restricted on those three levels. Obviously, you can create your own, okay? Um, we just have the three levels as sort of like a, a default. I kind of talk about those three levels and um, keep it very simple, meaning all of your users, when they log in, they see all these applications, right? They just have full access. Um, that second level is more of taking some of these applications away. So again, they can log into the system, but maybe they're just not seeing all these applications. And then that third level is even restricting them even more. So maybe you're not, maybe you're taking the applications away, but then there are even, you know, less permissions within that application. So, you know, they click on playlist, maybe they only see one playlist. They don't see the other 20. Or maybe when they're in the media library and they're creating assets, they have to have approver. Someone needs to check, make sure spelling, you know, branding, all that is, is staying tuned. Um, again, so those are the three levels of permissions and each permission is a little bit different within each application, but know that they're there. At an organization level, uh, again, when you're at an organization level and you're dealing with like a network, right? I mean, we're dealing with multiple players in multiple states or multiple countries. That means you're dealing with not just the player self, but the users. And so we have a way for you to export the information and see all your users and see what they have access to. Um, again, giving you the control to obviously manage uh, your entire network as, you know, as successfully as, as you can. So that's the overview of the CMS. Um, there's a lot of ways to learn more. All right. So one way is you can go and check out our website, which has a lot of good documentation, has a lot of good examples. Email us, call us. We'll deep dive into this. Okay. We'll show you some really good examples. Or maybe I said something you're like, oh, yes, you know, I really want to learn more about that. We'll make sure we deep dive into it. Here at Reach, we stick up with our tutorials, all right? We're constantly updating our tutorials. We want to make sure that anyone in the system is obviously fully trained and understands and feel comfortable with it. So tutorials are obviously another good example. Um, other than that, you guys, I mean, this is our walkthrough, obviously. Uh, again, my name is Michelle White, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to sort of view and, and watch this. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day.